Greetings friends and good morning. I decided to try to put together a short little video for you this week and it's going to be kind of a show and tell but we're also going to read uh, a small bit from the book of Revelation and also a bit from the apocryphal book of 2nd Esdras. Now uh, on to the show and tell real quick. The couple weeks ago, I was uh, I ran a 5K in a little tiny small town in Indiana, and then they had like it was one it was one of those weekends where they had a bunch of garage sales and stuff, and I found myself in this big warehouse of books, and uh, we looked around for a little bit, and I'm getting ready to leave, and I see Hebrew text out of the corner of my eye, which you can see right here. Hopefully that's zooming in. And I just saw that out of the corner of my eye. And I looked down and said, hey, that's in Hebrew. And I grabbed it off the shelf and I said, look, it says Torah. And so it's just, uh, it's nothing too amazing of a find if you're into finding old books and old Bibles and things. But I just thought it was cool. I've never found one just like at a garage sale or something. But it's a Torah. It was printed in Britain. Actually, London, it says here, uh, in the 70s, and how it ended up in a small little town of, uh, of Indiana, uh, I'm not sure, but I just thought it was really cool. I have a couple of tours already, but I, I always look for, like, really old ones, but 70s, so not super old, but I just thought it was cool, uh, interesting thing to find. And the benefit for studying Hebrew for the last five or six years is that you get to a place where you see the text and you recognize it just like you would English text, except since it's not English, it jumps out at you a little bit more when you're walking and scanning some books. Now, what I really want to show you, and I may have shown, you may have seen this before, I may have shown it once before. This right here is an old King James Bible from 1860s and it belonged to an old Baptist church in New York. Now, it's not a 1611, which I can't imagine how difficult it would be to get possession of one of those. <clears throat> but an 1800s nonetheless is really, really cool. And the reason that I'm showing it to you this morning is because we're going to read from the book of 2nd Esdras. I'm not actually going to read it out of here, but I'm going to show you that it is in here and how Bibles used to come, how they used to be printed from 1611 until about late 1800s, early 1900s. So I'm going to grab the camera and try not to be too obnoxious with it here. So bear with me and hopefully you can read this. So Holy Bible, this is, says Old and New Testament, that's how it would come. With Apocrypha, Concordance, and Psalms, as you can see there, 1868. And then this is what the uh, next page would look like. So you have names in order, books of the New Testament, and of the Apocrypha. So you'd have the way these are printed, you'd have the Old Testament. Then you would have the Apocrypha in the middle. So you've got first and second Esdras, Tobit, Judith, the rest of Esther, Wisdoms, Ecclesiastes, Baruch, the Epistle of Jeremiah, the Song of the Three Children, Story of Susanna and the Idol Bell and the Dragon, which we've covered multiple times, the Prayer of Manasseh, and First and Second Maccabees. So, I just wanted to, sorry about the camera here. So I just wanted to show you that it's not just hearsay. You know, you you see videos and you see people like me get behind a 
uh, behind a microphone or a camera and say, hey, the, the Bibles used to have the Apocrypha and it did for hundreds of years. Well, I wanted to show you that it's not just nonsense, that it's reality. And I have known a Bible from the 1800s. So there's the show and tell. So I'm going to cut the video for just a second and then we'll do our reading for this morning. All right, now for the reading portion. So I'm going to go to Revelation chapter 7. And this is not going to be like a theological discussion. I'm just going to show you what I think is interesting. So if we go to Revelation chapter 7, which starts with the sealing of the 144,000, right? Uh, so I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And then it goes through all the tribes, 12,000 from each tribe. Then we get to verse 9. It says, After this, behold, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man can number of all nations and kindreds of people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palm branches in their hands. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and without the elders and the four beasts. And they fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And then one of the elders saying unto me, says, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? In other words, where did they come from? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which come out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in the temple, and that sitteth on the throne, and dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither shall they thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. One of my favorite passages in the book of Revelation, and also one that makes you really ponder what's going on here. Is, is this people who have died, have been martyred, uh, and it's a great multitude of people. And because of their sacrifice, they're before the throne of God day and night. And it says they came out of great tribulation. Or is this, I've speculated and wondered, maybe, you know, is this the, resurrect, rec, the resurrected people? Is this the rapture? And there's suddenly a multitude in heaven who have been rescued from the great tribulation. We'll just have to see. Again, when it comes to prophecy, I'm not one of those people who says, this is how it is, and try to act like I know all things, like so many do. If a man thinks he knows anything, the scriptures say, that he knows nothing yet that he ought to know. So when it comes to prophecy, I say, here's what I think, here's a couple of options I think it could be. I'm almost done with this video, but I wanted to show you something out of Second Esdras, which is almost exactly the story that we just read. So, real quick, and I'm reading out of the, uh, this, I have these linked, the Researcher's Library, Ancient Text, the Apocrypha, which this one also includes Enoch, Jasher, and Jubilees. There's usually, there's always a link on the YouTube channel. To this book because I think it's just a necessary resource and it's fairly inexpensive so here's what it says I as I received a command from the Lord on Mount Horab to go to Israel and when I came to them they rejected me and refused the Lord's commandment therefore I say to you O nation that hear and understand await your shepherd he will give you everlasting rest because he who will come at the end of the age is close at hand. Be ready for the rewards of the kingdom because the eternal light will shine upon you forevermore. Flee from the shadow of this age. Receive the joy of your glory. I publicly call on my Savior to witness. Receive what the Lord has entrusted to you and be joyful, giving thanks to Him who has called you to heavenly kingdoms. 
Rise and stand and see at the feast of the Lord the number of those who have been sealed. So remember, in Revelation 7, we have the sealing of the 144,000. Next verse. Those who have departed from the shadow of this age and received glorious garments from the Lord. Remember, it says they had washed their robes in white. Interesting enough here, it says those who have departed from the shadow again. But is he talking about death or, you know, the number of your children whom you've desired is full. Beseech the Lord's power that your people who have been called from the beginning may be made holy. I, Ezra, saw on Mount Zion a great multitude, remember he's seen a vision, which I could not number. And they are all praising the Lord with songs. Doesn't that sound exactly like Revelation 7? In their midst was a young man of great stature, taller than any of the others. And on his head of each of them, he placed a crown. But he was more exalted than they, and he was spell, and I was held spellbound. Then I asked the angel, who are these, my Lord? He said, these are they who have put off mortal clothing and have put on the immortal and have confessed the name of God. And now they are being crowned and receive palms. Then I said to the angel, who is that young man who places crowns on them and puts palms in their hands? And he answered and he said to me, he is the son of God, whom they confessed in the world. So I began to praise those who had stood valiantly for the name of the Lord. And the angel said to me, go tell the people how great and many are the wonders of the Lord God, which you have seen. And that's the end of that chapter. And I have chills from reading it this morning. Very interesting. And I think rather than just try to sit here and uh, flutter around, I'm just going to leave the video at that and let you ponder it for yourself. Second Ezra sees the same vision that John saw. He sees this tall man handing out crowns, handing out palms, and this great multitude. He has no idea where it came from. The angel says these are those who have put on immortality, and they confessed the name of the Son of God while they were in the world. And now they're being blessed forever. I pray that you've been encouraged this morning. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Peace and grace be with all of you, and until next time, God bless.